Welcome back to Goliath. Today we're going to be going over using ESP IDF inside of VS Code. VS Code is a very popular IDE and development tool that a lot of people are using these days. Mike here has been experimenting with uh, some of the ESP IDF plugin for VS Code and now using it with the Goliath Basics plugin or project. So, Mike, what does it take to actually get started here? So the interesting thing is I avoided trying this for a while. I usually feel most comfortable in the terminal and I was like, oh, I don't want to learn a whole bunch of new stuff, but it turns out it's super easy. Like ESP or Espressif, the company behind the ESP32 maintains the ESP IDF ecosystem, which is built on top of FreeRTOS. And to help people develop on that, they also have a VS Code plugin. Um, and in order to start with it, all you really need to do is open up your VS Code, go to this icon that says extensions and type in ESP IDF. Um, I'm going to make this pane a little bit wider and you can see this icon comes up. There will be an install button. I've already done the install, but you get the option of like automatic install or a manual install where you can tell it like what folders to use and that sort of thing. Uh, you also have written a blog post about this. So if people want to see the blog, uh, the installation instructions, a little bit more of a step-by-step -step walkthrough, they can uh, check that out as well at blog.goliath.io. Yeah, so to kind of show it off today, like, so we, I have the tools installed already, but let's actually open up a project, build it, flash it to the microcontroller and see what that's all about. Um, just to get started, once the plugin is installed, you can see this blue bar down at the bottom of my VS Code. It has a bunch of options like this installed version 4.4.3 of the ESP IDF automatically. You can select between different versions here if you need to. Goliath does support uh, version 5 if you're up on that already. Um, other things that you see here, the, the port that it's going to be looking for the device on, the device from the family, like if it's ESP32, 32C3, 32S2, all of those. And then these are the different um, operations that you can do, and we'll use those in just a sec. Uh, but the first thing we need is like to go out and get a sample program. So yeah. uh, Goliath has a an SDK that is actually built on top of ESP IDF, and so we can actually run one of the samples from this page. So I'm going to go and grab, uh, just like we were going to clone the repo, I'm going to use VS Code to do the cloning. And so um, what I'll do is open the command palette with Control Shift P. You can see that along the top. And if I type git CL for clone, you can see the first option is clone. And then I just paste in my repository address here. And we'll see that pop up a window that says, hey, where do you want me to put this? And so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the folder that I'm working on. It will uh, encapsulate everything in a subfolder that is in the name of the repository. So we'll see that in just a minute. Um, so it's already cloned and it says, do you want me to open this? And I want you to say cancel because this is repository is cross platform. Since we have multiple platforms on it, we actually want to target a specific directory for our example code. So I'll go ahead and go to file open folder and I get the folder dialog and I'm just gonna go into, here's that folder that was just cloned, Goliath firmware SDK. Inside of it, we have an examples folder and then ESP IDF examples. And today we're gonna do the Goliath basics, which just kind of shows off all the features of Goliath. And once we open that, you can see we have our main code inside of main here and uh, we can start working on it. The thing is, there's one more preparation step that uh, we should try not to forget, which is there are submodules that Goliath uses, and we need to tell uh, VS Code, or we need to use Git to fetch those submodules. So now that I have the project open, I'm going to open a terminal up top here and say new terminal. And anyone that's done submodules before will recognize this command. It's also in the blog post. I'll type Git submodule update dash dash init dash dash recursive. And Chris, yeah, these are is... like helper libraries. So like CJSON yeah. and, and uh, libcoap. I was going to ask about that because a lot of the times when I'm installing tools like this, there's other compilers and helper elements as well. You know, basically all the dependencies that come along with, uh, you know, projects, I'm, example projects I might clone. So all of that stuff is now, so now that you're updating the submodule, everything is good to go. You don't need to install anything else. That's right. And consider this part of the installation. Like we clone the repository. We just need to make sure the repository's submodules are also cloned and then we're kind of done with that. So I can just right. type exit here and we're back kind of to the happy space of being in an IDE and you know working on our code. Um, awesome. So I could actually, uh, if we want to see the effect of this, I could change something here. But I think the easiest thing, since it's example code, is to just build it and run it on the microcontroller. I've got an ESP32 on our breadboard here. 
Um, before you start this, you're gonna wanna plug it into your USB port and uh, we're gonna wanna make sure that we've got the right USB port. So I'm gonna click down here and it rec it'll tell you what's available on your system. So I know this device is on USB zero. Um, and then the next one was what project do you wanna run it on, which is our Goliath Basics project. Now it says USB zero and I can come over here to this fire icon for build, flash and monitor. And this should, if we're if we did everything right, um, and I'm gonna close this editor window so we have a little more space. Clicking on this build, flash and monitor button should build everything. It should then flash it to the device and then it should open a serial window to the device. It's like everything in one button. So let's see how yeah. lucky we get here, Chris. And if you don't have that, all of the, like you showed earlier, all the other buttons allow you to do each of these individual things. I would say if people are new to this kind of ecosystem, generally you, you almost can't hurt, you can't hurt anything by clicking these other buttons. Uh, be patient with this first build, but you know, you can always go back and try other stuff with the other buttons that are there. Yeah, there's a, like a trash can button for the full clean. Like if, if you can't figure out why things are giving you errors, try a full clean. Uh, there's just the build button. Uh, there's a couple of different different flash um, options here. So one is the select flash method. We're gonna, that's gonna automatically be triggered in a second here. So I'll, I'll tell you that about that. And then just the flash device and then the monitor device. So flash writes the um, compiled code to the chip and then monitor opens a serial connection so we can see what the chip is sending back as far as like debug messages and, and shell commands. Great. I don't know why it puts this window over the top of what it's doing. So sorry about that. I don't want to click cancel because I think it'll uh, it'll end the build. Looks like it's almost done underneath. Yeah, all right. And we can see um, here's the size of uh, all of the different parts of the build. So if you can look and see how you're doing, 49.9% uh, of our static RAM is being used for this one. Um, but you can see it popped up this window at the top. When I mentioned before, there's a button that says uh, select flash method. This is the select flash method dialog. So JTAG would be like, if you're using an external program or connected to the ESP32, we're actually using that dev board that has a USB to serial chip on it. So it's actually programming the chip over UART. I guess you just kind of need to, to know that. And then it asks me which project folder to save this um, selection to, and I'll do that. And now it says it's connecting to the device. It's erasing the flash. Now it's writing the new flash. And it should, once it gets to 100% here, um, restart and run the firmware. All right, now it's gonna start and this is the monitor. So this is actually information coming from the chip back to the computer and the chip is telling us, hey, I don't have Wi-Fi and I don't have Goliath credentials. So I'm not gonna do anything until you give those to me. And the cool thing is if I press enter, we get an interactive prompt where I can uh, list those things. I wonder if I do settings help, I've never tried this live things. Oh, hey, so settings help will tell you the uh, format that you can use for these. Um, if you look in the readme of the sample project, it'll tell you exactly what things you need. I know that I need to set um, the Wi-Fi, uh, let's see, what is it called? SSID. SSID. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And that's Goliath staff. Um, so this is I the one at Mike's set. house as well. This is, you know, right. fill in your own here, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the PSK is like the pre-shared key, which you can think of as a password. And for me, that's easy IOT for firmware engineers. And then I need Goliath credentials, Chris. So let's go and look at the Goliath console. Now uh, you can sign up for our dev tier, which is your first 50 devices are free. Play around with uh, building a fleet. Um, I'm just going to create a new device. So think of this as like a digital representation of the ESP32 on my desk. I'm going to call it uh, ESP IDF VS Code since that's what we're working on. And I'm going to leave the rest of the settings as they are and click save. And that will tell me, hey, I've just generated a pre-shared key ID and pre-shared key. Those are our credentials. Um, if you already have a device, this will be the device view page and there's a credentials tab that'll also share those. So I'm gonna grab the PSK ID first and go back to my VS code and type settings set Goliath PSK ID. And then I will get the PSK itself right here. Same situation, settings set Goliath PSK. And now I have all the credentials that I need, Wi-Fi credentials and Goliath credentials. I can just type reset, which tells the device, hey, do a power cycle. And when you come back up, use the stored keys. So right now it's trying to connect to Wi-Fi. 
found my Wi-Fi, got an IP address right here. Now it's going to go ahead and try to connect to Goliath. It has connected to, to Goliath. It knows it's got a current version of firmware. If I upload a newer version of firmware to Goliath, it will recognize it and will automatically start an OTA update. That's actually what this uh, waiting for OTA, OTA manifest is telling you right here. Um, and now it's just into the loop of the program. So if we go back to the Goliath console and we look at our logs, we can see all those logs are coming up um, that we just saw. So sending 14, sending 15, if we do the real time, we can see these coming in for the chip as they go. And we've gone from like zero to connected, Chris. Yeah, IoT device in a, in a, in a moment. Another thing that I always like to call out is like from right now, so you've just got a single device onto the Goliath cloud. Like you mentioned, it's checking for the an updated over the year update possible. But from day one, you have an OTA updatable device, which is pretty crazy because you think about a lot of IoT projects I've seen in the past. They, you know, it's kind of the thing that happens when you have time for it. You get the, you get everything else working first. You get all your IOs working first. Yeah. But uh, in this case, you can just go and send it an update, and that's really convenient because now if you have one device, it's fine with a cable. But if it's hundred devices, it's a, uh, it's a little bit more complex. Yeah. And I mean, this, this demo has a bunch of stuff built into it. So it, it'll show you like, if you wanted to change the frequency of those hello messages from once every second to once every 10 seconds, um, I just changed it on the cloud and the device has already reported, Hey, I'm changing, or I guess I changed it once every five seconds is what I said, even though I said 10. Yeah. So I already saw that things like remote procedure call. I know built into this is one called multiply and I can give it like the number seven and the number 21, and it'll multiply those together and then send them back to me. So this actually sends them to the chip and the chip comes back and says, here's your answer right there. So I, all of the framework for you to work with the Goliath features are already built in and ready for you to play with. That's great, that's great. All right, well, is there anything else people need to know in order to get started with the ESP IDF plugin inside of VS Code? So once you get to this point, you're like, okay, I get what those buttons are. There's a ton of other features and uh, Espressif has great documentation on it, but you can also just use that command palette, control shift P and type in like ESP IDF and you'll see a list of like all the different things that you can do. So like I used this to erase the flash memory on the device before we started this video because I wanted to get rid of any stored keys like Wi-Fi credentials and, and keys that were already on the device. So that's pretty useful. Um, but for instance, if you're going to be doing debugging, I saw um, open OCD um, stuff on here, GDB stuff on here. There's just a ton of options and basically whatever workflow you're going to need to do with the chip, you're going to be able to do inside of VS Code. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great. Mike, thanks for showing us this stuff. People can always go over to the forums if they have questions about this. Forum.goliath.io. Don't want to send them in the wrong place. Uh, Forum.goliath.io. You can also check us out on goliath.io to get your first 50 devices free as part of the dev tier. Thanks for showing us this stuff today. Hey, it was a lot of fun. I'll see you next time.